Hello, this is Steve Huff again from stevehuffphotos.com. What I'm going to do today, this is my second video in what will become a series of videos. And this one is going to show you how I sometimes process a portrait. Um, I am, first of all, I want to say that I am not a professional with Photoshop or processing. I'm not some guru. But a lot of people have asked me how I get the look I get. So I just want to show you guys what I do in Photoshop to get the look I get. That's basically it. There's, there's a lot to learn in Photoshop, and I cannot say that I know it all because I don't. But for now, we're going to work on this portrait. Let me open it up. This is a shot I took when I was testing the Leica 90 Summicron lens. So first of all, I opened up the RAW file in Adobe Camera Raw. Um, opened it in Photoshop, which then opened the RAW file in Adobe Camera Raw. And I might have already tweaked this a little bit, but what I'm going to do today is I'm going to give this image a more moody feel, which is what I do a lot. So again, like I did in the last video, I'm raising the black level up. Now you're going to say, oh my goodness, that looks horrible, but I'm going to give it some fill light. And you're going to say, oh my goodness, that still looks horrible. So what I like to do for the extra moodiness is take the saturation down. You can see what I just did. I'm going to take it down a little bit more. We might even turn this image into black and white. And I will follow through and show you exactly how I do that. Um, brightness and contrast, I think I'm going to leave it alone. Let's see what the contrast slider will do for me here. Yeah, I'll leave that about right there. Um, and we're good. We're going to move on to sharpness, which I've already done. But sharpness, again, I like to leave it at around 120 for a full raw file. And then when I resize it for web, I don't really have to do much to it at all as far as sharpness goes. Vignetting, we're going to add some of it. We're going to add a lot to this one. Check this out. See how dark it got? And it almost looks like there's a soft light glowing on his face. I'm going to push it back a little bit. Maybe go back to this screen here and bump up the brightness a little bit. A little more fill light. And there is that. Now I'm going to open the image in Photoshop. That was just a quick, dirty, basic raw processing. And you can see, oh, it's, it, it's sharp. It was a little out of focus maybe, or a little motion blur, but it's going to work good for what I want to show you. I'm going to resize it like I would for the web. Usually I resize them at 1,100 pixels wide. This one's 1,000, so it all fits in the screen for you. Now, with, with a portrait, what I like to do, first thing, is take the Sharpen tool. Again, I usually leave it around 8%. I'm going to reduce my brush size so I can about the same size as the eyes. And then I'm going to run it over the eyes a little bit. This will automatically, and the eyebrows even, this will automatically sharpen the eyes. Sometimes I do the lips. And what I also like to do is grab the dodge tool, set it to mid-tones at about 10-11%, and lightly go over the whites of the eye, the whole eye actually, eyeball. We're going to go over this eye here, and that brightens them up a little bit because the eyes here are a little dark. Okay, now for extra drama and effect, here's what I like to do. I zoom in to about 500% on the eye. I pick the burn tool. Here my brush size is set to about six mid-tones. I got the exposure at about 30. I'm gonna actually change that to shadows. And I'm gonna outline the eye kind of carefully, even up here. You can see what I'm doing, but here's the most important part. Outline right here, and it will darken that, and you'll see when I zoom back out the effect it has. It adds quite a bit of drama to the eyes. Now a lot of people ask me if when I do this, or they see the finished product and they're like, wow, what kind of camera are you using? Does it come out of the camera like that? And of course you're not going to get any camera to outline the eyes like this and accentuate them. I just like to do that again because it makes the image a little more dramatic and sometimes it's fun to mess with. Now there are times when I don't do anything to a portrait 
when I when I want to just have a natural look. This is just when I'm bored and I'm messing around. Sometimes I'll take this and I'll also darken this line here. Now we're going to go back out to 100%. And you can see the eyes look way more dramatic. They're outlined. It, it looks, it just has a really cool look to it. So now what I'm going to do with this image, I actually am kind of happy with it like it is, but I have Nick Color Effects Pro installed on this computer, and I'm going to open it up. And I'm going to show you what I can do with some of these filters. We're going to go to the Darken slash Light and Center filter. The Place Center button I'm going to place right here on his nose. Now these sliders, Center Luminosity, this shows how much brightness it's going to give to where I place my center point. The border luminosity, if I want to add more vignetting, I can take that down or I can take it up. I'm going to take it to about 60-ish percent. Center size, that's how the size you want the glow on the face, the light, the luminosity. So we're going to, I just slide it until it starts looking how I want it to look. So right there I hit OK. And it adds a little glow to his face, like almost like I have a light source hitting his face. Now, when I took this image, it was in my son's bedroom. He was sitting on my son's bed. My son has a blue wall. And there was just window light coming in. So there's no kind of lighting except the natural window light. So now there's that. I'm going to flatten the layer because that creates a new layer. And there's the finished image. Let's open up the JPEG and see the comparison. Look at that. There's the JPEG that came out of the camera. Okay, we're going to blow it up. And here is the image after I processed it. Now, see the drama and the effect it added to this image? He looks serious. He looks tough. He, be, he means business in this image. He can also look like he's thinking. He's, he's... I'm not going to get into the image, actually. I'll be here all day. But I much prefer the processed image. Again, processed. And there it is before. What a difference. So this is like right out of the M8. So if you shoot JPEGs with the M8, this is what you're going to get. Not that this is bad, because here you can adjust the hue and saturation. You know, you can kind of mess to try and get kind of close to this one. But right there is where it's at, right there. Sometimes what I also like to do is to take the burn tool, make my brush a little bigger, and darken in the edges a little bit even more. I'm, I'm a huge fan of the vignetting. Uh, it just draws attention to your main subject and puts the focus there. So now what I'm going to show you really quick is a quick and dirty black and white conversion using Color Effects Pro. Basically, you can pick a filter color, which I usually don't do. Um, and then you just adjust the brightness and contrast to what you want it to be. You can also choose Tonal Enhancer or Dynamic Contrast, which really gives you the contrast. But that's, that's usually too much. So we're going to go back to the black and white conversion, give it a little contrast, and let's see what happens. Boom. Now, for some of you, this, this darkened edges here, the darkened edges are a little bit too much. If I knew I was going to go black and white and use this tool to do it in the first place, I wouldn't have added all that vignetting because this would have added some already. But you can see the difference. Color, black and white. For this image, I prefer, prefer the color. The black and white darkens it up a little bit, so I would have to go into the dodge tool, lighten up the eyes again, Let's lighten up this eye, you know, there you go, black and white, color, and again, the original JPEG. So much for that lesson, that was quick and easy, and that's actually how it is. Once you learn how to do this stuff, it goes really quick and really easy, and it's actually, actually a lot of fun to see what you can do with each image. So. I believe that Photoshop in the digital world is very important to getting the most out of your images. Just like in the darkroom back in the film days, and people still use the darkroom. Last year I was using the darkroom. They dodge and burn using light. And uh, with this, you dodge and burn using tools in Photoshop. Same thing. I will have more coming soon, and uh, I will put them all on one page. So they'll all be on the same page. So you can bookmark the page for future reference and check back occasionally to see what's new. Hope you enjoyed this lesson. And again, this is Steve Huff from stevehuffphotos.com.